Another day in the garage. Uh, today is clean up parts. I'll spin you around here. Gonna get the starter cleaned up. Uh, I won't be doing the generator bracket because I'm converting to an alternator. I have an alternator bracket I bought new. Um, that's gonna be about it. I'm gonna look in the manual or the assembly manual and see if there's anything in there that I need to make sure I get done before we get a lot farther with that engine where it is. Um, I don't want to go too far ahead, but I don't want to be too far behind when it's adding accessories. The other thing would be underneath this cover is a secret. No, it's not a secret, it's the head. The other thing I'm gonna do is get the head on the motor. So, and the head needs to get painted. So that's what we'll be doing today. Um, as you can see, there's a lot more garage space up in front of it now, just because of the things that I've got on it believe it or not just the engine being off that cart and the engine stand being folded up and put away most of the other peripherals are over here we've got the fan we've got the uh, breather the valve cover um, the water pump is in the box and uh, we'll be putting some of that stuff on that we can once we get the head on so the next move is uh, I want to get the dirty stuff done I want to get the starter cleaned up and see what I want to do with the fuel pump I'll probably clean it just a tad and uh, get that painted and uh, we'll go from there and it won't be long once we get this engine on here I get the starter on there I want to stick a battery on it like I've said and spin it uh, put some oil in the base and spin it and see what our oil pumps doing and uh, then we'll do a compression test on it after we do that and uh, we'll go from there We're going to put our starter back together. Excuse my bench. It's absolutely disgusting. Really, it's mostly tools that need to get put away. But we'll forget about that. Disregard that even being here. We're going to concentrate on the starter. As you can see, I did get the armature in the lathe. I scraped this just a little and then sanded it. And then you have to clean in between each one of the commutators. So this is your rotor called the rotor because it rotates and then uh, this is just the horn the cone on the end that the Bendix goes in but when I come back over here we'll uh, put the stator back together and then I'm gonna have to clean this bench off because the final move on the generator or, well not the final move but uh, the next to the last move on the generator is going to be soldering that piece back together and it's going to take some serious heat but anyway Okay, there's a little washer that goes down in there. We have to have that handy. We could actually could put that down in there probably. So it's there, but we want to clean the inside of this out right now. So we're just going to shove a dirty rag through there first because it's going to be filthy. We're going to start by greasing this end up down in there. I know my head's in your way, but most of this grease is going to get shoved right out the other end. Let me put that shaft down in there, but that's all right. It'll stay in those notches in that, those grease grooves in that bushing. That's the objective. And that's actually this end. I was just pushing on the wrong end because I'm looking to grease the wrong end. But if you look, there's a little notch. You can see this. But this notch right here, that's kind of what that's for, is to hold grease. So we're going to make sure that's got most of it in it, because like I said, most of what's on that shaft is going to get pushed right out the end, or it'll get pushed up into the notch. We need a brush, bristle in there. And then this whole shaft we're going to grease lightly. And we're also going to grease these splines lightly.
It gets heavy to hold on to there for too long. The um, ring gear on the flywheel to start the motor, so you want it to have a little bit of give until it catches in the gear good. So this part goes down in there, but I've got to go get my uh, fingers because I'm going to ride in here, and I want to get that looped up for them. Let me just get to make sure that little washer stays. That's the way that goes. And then if you can see in there, those fingers move that Bendix. You see down here, I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll tip this back just a little. I don't want to tip it too far, I'll lose it. But if you watch that, Bendix will go up and down. That's where it's going to stay normally. And when you go to start the car, your connections here are going to push that in and turn the motor, which is going to turn the other motor as well. So we're going to leave that right there because that's where that goes. Okay, we're going to swap places with this. We're going to give this a rest over here on the other bench for a minute. I'll go get it and bring it back when we're ready for it. sure I'm going to want this can. Now I call it the can. This thing in the vise to make this move. I've got to move here. I've got to get these magnets. Well, they aren't magnets. They're windings back in here. The stator windings. Okay. Got the blocks, now I just got to find the winding, they're right here. Okay, these go in this way. This bar lines up with the battery contact, start contact. That's where it has to be soldered. Matter of fact, I probably ought to clean that up really good before I put it back in here. So, give that a spin on the old uh, square wheel here. Just completely uh, eliminated the fact that my gloves weren't greasy anymore touching that grease gun. Has anybody ever had a grease gun that isn't all covered with grease on the outside, no matter what you do with it? Spray it off with some brake clean to make sure it is good and clean. No grease on it because we're going to have to solder that and we don't want a whole bunch of crud laying on there because it's going to be difficult enough as it is. 
As you can see, those are still dirty, but sorry, I've taken all that wrapping off. I don't know how I'd clean them anymore. I didn't trust the brake clean to not take the resin off the, or varnish, I should say, off the, uh, these shouldn't make a difference other than they have a tendency to kind of be fitted to what they've been running in for ever. These screws are what's going to hold it in. I know my head's right in your way. Okay, now. Now I have this thing with a whole bunch of uh, fiber insulating bushings that need to go in here. That's your contact for your start button. And we're going to turn it around and you can see. Well, maybe you can't see in there, but anyway. That's where this is going to solder to it, so we need to get that cleaned up really good as well. Now we have to put this in there. We have to get all these goodies in there behind it. As we're putting it in there, so we need to bend this kind of out of the way, which I just bent it into the way, which I shouldn't have done, but I did. I'm going to bend this back because we got to bend it back in there. We got to get in there to tighten this thing up. Also, we're going to turn this, as long as we're in this, we're going to turn this around because if you look, you see how this is angled on the edge? This is where the contacts have been catching it. And they're wore a little bit. It's not wore that bad, but we're going to turn this around so they start catching on the new edge. You can wear the new edge down for a while. Once we get figured out where that new edge is, we can get everything lined up. This is flux, for those of you who don't know what I'm doing here. What this does is this actually cleans the surface once heat gets applied to it. lights on on here so obviously we're transferring heat it's just going to take it a minute like it did before that's kind of my fault but I wanted to get the prime deck in behind there the more contact you can make the better too more surface area but as long as that light ain't flashing, that means it's not up to temperature, so it's heating. So that's a good thing. And then we'll see, because we'll start spitting and sputtering with the flux here. In the area we're trying to solder. It's 
starting to bubble, so that's a good sign. And once that solder melts, we're going to see what happens with some new solder. a little better. That didn't run right out the bottom. That one is. It's getting so it's trying to melt somewhere besides just at the tip of the gun. So that's a good sign. Much better. Now we're getting to stick to that knot. Move it around a little bit. Keep getting what hanging down here and pick up. Move up here a little bit. Well, this is where we get stupid because we're going to put a little, uh, we're going to leave that staying hot. We're going to let this cool for a minute. And then we'll put a little tension on there and if it pops right off, it's, oh well. If it doesn't break off, we're good to go. Nope, as you can see, with me prying on it, you probably couldn't see it, but anyway, with me prying on that, this wire moves back here, or there's contact. See it moving back here? But it's not moving where I soldered it. That's enough pressure. I mean, if it's moving back here and it ain't moving there, we've got it good. So we're all set. So we shut the soldering gun off. We'll put this back over there. And just so you know, didn't melt a hole in the glove, but that's still hot. <laughs> just in case you guys forgot, I don't want you getting burnt. our finger away from that. This is part of the operation of starting it. This was down on here this way. Those are those two rolls of tape I put on those. Get them started down over that armature to begin with. And there is a pin in this. As you can see, it did catch. Right there's the pin. That goes down in. There's only one hole for that pin to go in. That lines you up. Make sure you're in the right place. So right now, everything looks good. The armature turns, which it's loose because it doesn't have this end on yet. We put grease in the end there. We'll put a little grease on here just so it's got a little more. For the sake of having some. Put this back over here in its safe place. Get your nose and decide which way this goes on. You have two contacts here, one on this side, one on this side, to go into these contacts on the end of these um, stator windings. I left the screws in so I wouldn't misplace them. So the first thing that needs to happen is they need to come out. And while you're doing this, you need to, these brushes all need to be pried back so they can be, 
they got to go all around the outside of that all at the same time you got to try to do all this stuff and get this thing lined up there's a pin in this as well and what that pin does is it puts it in the right place but it also lines up the holes for the two bolts that hold this whole unit together so you kind of got to get ready with a little tiny screwdriver or a small screwdriver it's clean wipe it on your pants and you want to get of course, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to switch you over to the other side. Once again, I'm going to be right in your way. Of course, the cord's got to catch on the stand. You get you turned around. I'll get you pointed in the right direction. I think you'll be able to see what I'm doing here, hopefully. All right, I think. But in here is where we're working. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to catch that brush on the back of that armature when I set this down on there. All right. Now that one's started. Now we're going to look for our pin, see how close we are. We need to be about there. So we're going to reach over here and push this brush. I'm pushing on the brush carrier, not the brush itself. And then we're going to push this one open. going to be a, a issue because you can only go so far with each one. Each one gets in the way every time you go that little bit farther with the other one. And then all the while you're trying to line this up you got to get your shaft lined up up here because nothing's going to happen if you don't have that lined up. Okay. So now these need to go on the outside of those because the threads for the screws are in the contact on the inside. Pins lined up, the contacts are lined up here and here. We're good to go. I'm going to go get my screw starter. Anybody that doesn't know what these are, these are the handiest thing to have you could possibly imagine for starting screws. What it is, is this little tip right here is spring-loaded. And if you look, there's two little straight bars and then there's a crooked one in the middle. Well, when you cock this, if you will, you twist it against the spring and tip it up, it puts that center one in line. And when you put your screw in there, when you push it, it locks the center one spring-loaded, so it twists it in the center of that, and it'll hold that screw pretty good. I mean... There are times when it won't quite hold it. It'll hold the screw, but you can't put a lot of stress or torque on it. And if you do it and do it right, then get these threads started straight. We can screw that in until it does get tight. And when we do, when we take it out, it'll relock it. It'll recock it so it's all ready. So I don't know. You understand what happens here, but I'll move this slow motion. It's cocked right now, so you see how everything's kind of in line. I mean, it's not perfect, but basically that's what you're doing. When you push in on this, see how that's in line? And then when you let go, it twists these, so it's got everything kind of jammed in that screw head, is what it amounts to. So when you cock it, it goes to there. And when you put this, get that in that screw slot, and in the center you push... Watch this little knot. I'm probably out of frame. Watch this little knot right here. It'll slide up into that slot. And when it does, it jams into that screw. And it'll hold that screw, like I said, for quite a while. Pretty good. I mean, if you get too crooked, it won't. You put too much torque on it, it won't. And then you just finish tightening it with a regular screwdriver. And you're good to go. I have several of these. Uh, there's just, <laughs> there's no, once you have one, there's no being without one. Um, I've got another one here that's actually for Phillips screws. It's actually for both. But it does the same thing on this end. Same idea. And this end is for Phillips screws. You can see it's at an angle, but it does the same thing. This one is harder to cock, but when you cock it, see how everything's straight? And then when you push the screw into it, it twists that center. So 
so it locks the screw on. That's for Phillips, this is for regular. The spring is going to hold this back here like this, all right, and so is that button. This is going to go on like this. When you pull the starter, it pushes this in. You watch this plate and you'll see it move. See how it pushes in? And what it does is it pushes in so it makes contact with that block, which is hooked to this terminal, and that block, which is the one we just soldered. And no, it's no longer hot. <laughs> all right, that's how your starter works. And all at the same time, when you're pushing on this, it's throwing that Bendix in, in the gear with the uh, flywheel gear. Get these loose. So you cock it, push it, and it's locked onto that screw until you want it off of there. You pry your screw and it'll come off. Cock it, get it lined up, put it in there, you're good to go. And I'm not going to take this screw back out of there because we're going to put it right in there. You got uh, the starter apart and sandblasted, cleaned up. They're all just kind of drying right now, waiting, and uh, once they get all dried up and ready to go, I will put it together and paint it, and then that'll be done. But right now, I moved on. We're going to be installing the head on the block. Um, I've already turned the uh, flywheel around to where the number one cylinder top dead center mark is lined up with the pointer in the observation hole. It's right next to where the starter goes in. We've got that set. Um, <clears throat> we're going to wipe it, the block down one last time, the bottom of the head one last time. We'll get the head gasket um, on there. And we got head bolts to clean up. I'm going to go put those in the soap. They're not that bad. They just need a little cleaning. So I'm going to go do that right now. That one. I think I got you looking pretty good, I hope. Sometimes I think I do, sometimes I don't. Still, I'm using the old camera. This says this side up, all right? So that makes it easy for us. And it's only gonna go one way, which is gonna be this way. never sees this gas could actually have it on it you can feel it so that's already coated the way they want it you really shouldn't do any more coating to it in any way shape or form everything is right the way it should be so now we need to carefully get the head on there I'm going to go get a couple of head bolts so we can use them to line that gasket up at the last minute 
before we drop the head down on there too far. Now, if you are working on a motor, I was always taught, and you don't have a specific bolt tightening pattern, you always work in a circle from the center out, and then start over and do it again. You never tighten them all the way the first time. Usually you want to go with like, more than likely, three trips, in other words, three, three rounds. These are supposed to be tightened to, I think, 70 or 80. So I'll start out at 40, probably 40, 60, 80 if they're 80. You got the, looking at it the right way, yep. This is 14. 14, 10, 6, 2, 3, 2, 3, 7, 11, 13, 7, 11, 13. 15, 9, 5, 1, 4, 8, 1, 4, 8, 12. Wow. Yeah, that's a, now nah, it's not that terribly unusual. Some engineer somewhere apparently decided it was necessary to do it that way. I was never going to look at that picture and remember how they wanted them, I can tell you that. So we got numbers on them now. We can at least be close. We're going to start off, we're going to go to 80. So we're going to go 40, 60, 80. Right now we're at 40. Number one. I'm going to have to get me an extension. My nose is running. I don't know why, but my nose started to run here all of a sudden. Okay, we got one. Two. I can't read that thing too well. that uh, 
little pipe right here, which is in the middle, believe it or not. Look at how all these rockers are dipped back. I've also got to get my lifters in here, my push rods in here before I go much farther. In fact, before I go much any farther. You can, whoop, see it came apart on me. The two piece connecting her rocker arm. Come on, I can put it back together. It's not that I can't, but I'm just hoping it would stay. And I've got to get that, this little uh, foil line configured up into that too. But anyway, let me get my push rod. Alright, here's the push rod. They've got to go down in and set in little cups and little liquids, so we're going to do them one at a time. I want to get some oil on the end of it. And there's a lot of room down in there to miss that lifter. So you have to be very kind of trying to pay attention to what you're doing. And you set it down in there that you hit that lifter. So if you miss, You can feel them when you run a little cup. There's no, there's no mistake in that they're in the right way. You got to make sure sometimes they might want to stop in the wrong spot. I'm gonna go get my little oil paint dryer here. Okay. Pour some on there later, and actually, it shouldn't take it long to get it up here. But. At least get some on the valve stem. As long as I'm doing it, I can get them out a little bit on the end of the rocker itself. So as you can see, I've got the head painted. Um, we got a little over paint in a few spots, but that'll scrape right off. I'll get the scraper and scrape that off. Then uh, I'm not gonna, the acorn nuts that were on the top that held the rocker or the valve cover on are all rusted to pieces. I don't think I'm gonna clean them up and use them. If I do anything, I'll just put a couple of regular nuts on there until I get a couple of nice probably chrome acorn nuts. Not that I'm going to chrome this to pieces, but at least they'll look good. Or at least new acorn nuts. Um, so that's about it. I'm going to run and grab my scraper, and then I'll grab that uh, 
valve cover gasket. We'll get that on there and then the valve cover. And just to set it on there, just to keep everything getting full of dirt. Okay, looks good. Like I say, these two bolts are holding on. I'll probably, I'll probably stick a couple of nuts on there just because, but final it will be a acorn nut. Once again, I painted this. This probably was not yellow from the factory, but I painted it yellow just because I painted the dipstick yellow. As a matter of fact, I could probably put the dipstick in it now. It's on the other side, unfortunately, but. Let's move you around anyway, because like I said, I want to put the water pump on, so I'm going to move. Okay, what I'm doing here is scraping off a little extra overflow for, of paint so the gaskets can rest against a clean metal. Fuel pumps installed. Um, just installed the starter, forgot to turn you on, but that's all I did. Put it in there, tighten the bolts. This lever goes all the way across here. This is where the foot pedal fastens. It comes up and through the floor, which the floor is right here. No, it's going to be more like about here. This comes up through to a pedal from inside the cab. And to start the truck, you push this pedal. What it does is it pushes this mechanism, pushes it forward, pushes on that button I told you that makes the contact between the positive terminal on the starter and the terminal where the battery cable hooks up. Alright, so that's how your starter works on this. You step on that pedal and the starter spins. So that's that. Um, fuel, it's a combination fuel pump, vacuum pump. I can't remember exactly what vacuum this supplies, rather the wipers maybe. I can't remember specifically why this has the vacuum on it, but it does. Um, this is where your distributor goes. This is where your distributor goes. This is where the vent goes. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go get my um, air breather, crankcase breather tube and get that mounted.
It looks like it goes up through there, which I'm sure it does. I'm sure the book says it goes up through there. And over to the intake some way, somehow, which looks like probably that way. Big chunk of it I missed when I painted it, too. I'm going to go touch that up. This paint dries in like three, two minutes. Okay, this one I believe is fuel. Let me see, fuel pump. That would tell me it's fuel. The other end here is going to have to continue to lay out here in La La Land until we get... I do have an intake and exhaust manifold coming. I finally found one. But Not sure what happened at the start of this video, but uh, it uh, should have showed the fact that uh, we had to take the old pulley off the generator and swap it out with the pulley on the new alternator so it would accommodate the 5 8 belt. Okay, so there's our alternator on, finally. Okay, so alternator, fan belt, fan. We got a couple of, we got the vacuum advance line, we got the fuel line to the carb run from the fuel pump and from the vacuum advance on the other side. Um, I know we covered, we've got the, um, distributor in, we got the crankcase ventilation tube in. So now we're just going to spend a few minutes looking through the book and seeing what we have laying around. Oh, and I did get more oil and I did get the oil in it. That pretty much takes care of what we're doing today. Um, tomorrow's another day, another project. So we'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe.